Hi friends, uh, I am Megha Siam, Assistant Professor, Department of Statistics, Christ College Autonomous in Nyalakoda. In my last video, we have discussed about uh, what is statistical inference and theory of point estimation. And in point estimation, we were talking about the desirable properties of a good estimator and we have discussed two important properties of a good estimator that is the unbiasedness and consistency. In this video, we are going to discuss about two important, uh, two other important properties of good estimators. Uh, that is a sufficient uh, estimator and the consist uh, efficient estimator. And the first uh, one we are going to discuss about the sufficient estimator. When we call an estimator to be sufficient. When we are talking about an estimator, if that estimator contains all the estimator itself is a random variable, it is a, uh, it, is, uh, it is a sample value and if that estimator contains all the information about the population parameter, then we can say that that estimator is sufficient. For that, we use the famous Neyman factorization theorem to find an sufficient estimator we use the celebrated Neyman factorization theorem and the theorem says that if we have uh, n observation x1 x2 etc xn it from that we will get that is a random sample and from that we will get a statistic we can find a statistic if the statistic is uh, said to be sufficient a statistic is said to be sufficient only if if and only if it contains all the information or it can be written as that is a likelihood function that is a joint pdf of the random observations can be written as the product in this product form that is in the product of uh, one depending on the statistic and other independent of the statistics. If we can write in this form, we can say that the statistic t is sufficient for the parameter theta. That is the statistic t will provide almost all the information about the parameter theta. And the likely, what is a likelihood function? A likelihood function is the product of the join uh, density function product of the density function and we can see one example here we take a sample from a Bernoullian trial and we do that trial for n times and we can show that summation xi is sufficient for theta that means from the summation xi we will get all the information about the parameter p so we are trying this, we are doing this based on this uh, name and factorization theorem. So we know that xi, if xi follows Bar Bar uh, Bernoulli 1p, then the density function of f, f of x, density function of xi is f of xi which is equal to p of xi 1, min, uh, 1 minus p raised to 1 minus xi that xi ranges between 0 and 1. Xi, xi values are 0 and 1. Then uh, this is uh, we are using this product here then we will get uh, when we will get we give the value 1 we will get p1 p into x p raised to x1 1 minus p raised to 1 minus x1 p raised to x2 into 1 minus p raised to 1 minus x2 etc into p raised to xn into 1 minus p raised to xn. So we all uh, we first consider this p value uh, because all the other values are changing then we can write p raised to x1 plus p x2 plus etc plus xn into 1 minus p raised to uh, n times n into 1 minus xi that can be written as p raised to summation xi into 1 minus p raised to n minus xi into 1. Then this is in the form of the name and factorization theorem this the, um, form L of x1, x2, etc, xn theta is equal to L1 t theta into L2 x1, x2, etc, xn. We can see that our uh, statistic, our estimator is a summation. We have to prove that this is the sufficient estimator. And we can see in here also, here also we have 
the summation x i. So, we consider these two as L1 and into 1 and L2 as an independent function. So, L1 is equal to p raised to summation x i 1 minus p raised to n minus summation x i and L2 is equal to 1. Then we can see that summation x i is a sufficient estimator for theta that means summation x i will provide all the information about the parameter theta. Now the other property of the estimator is the efficient estimator. We how to find an efficient estimator. So suppose we have two, two uh, statistics T1 and T2 uh, or two estimators T1 and T2. We have to find which uh, estimator is more efficient. For that we will first find the variance of these two estimators and we will compare these variances which estimator has minimum variance that will be called as the efficient estimator. So, we can see one example here there are three estimators the population is taken from uh, population has mean mu and variance sigma square and we have samples x1, x2, x3 that is the sizes 3 and it is given three estimators are given here t1 t2 and t3 we have to find which is the best estimator and the t1 is x1 plus x2 minus x3 t2 is 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 4x2 t3 is x1 plus x2 plus x3 and we will find the variances of these three estimators and we can see that the variance of t1 is equal to variance of x1 plus x2 minus x3 since the random samples are independent variance of t1 can be written as variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3 and each has variance sigma square we have seen in the question it is given that the variance is sigma square so therefore variance of x1 sigma square variance of x2 sigma square and variance of x3 sigma square therefore we will get the variance of t1 as 3 sigma square and now we will move on to the second uh, estimator t2 t2 is 2x1 plus 3x3 minus 4x2 again the random samples are independent we will find the variance of t2 variance of t2 is equal to variance of 2x1 plus variance of 3x2 plus variance of 4x3 by using the property of variance we can write the variance of 2x1 as 4 into variance of x1 plus 9 into variance of x2 plus uh, 16 into variance of x3 so that is equal to 4 times sigma square plus 9 times sigma square plus 16 times sigma square when we add we will get 29 sigma square now we will find the variance of the third estimator that is x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3. Again we are using the property of variance here we will take this 1 by 3 outside when we take this 1 by 3 outside we will get it as uh, squared a if we are taking a outside from the variance that will be a square. So 1 by 3 when we are taking 1 by 3 outside we will get 1 by 9 into variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3 that is equal to 1 by 9 plus into sigma square plus sigma square plus x sigma square which is equal to 3 sigma square by 9 that is equal to sigma square by 3. Now we compare the variances of these three estimators and we can see that variance of t3 is lesser than variance of t1 which is lesser than variance of t2 we we want the estimator with minimum variance and the estimator with minimum variance is t3 therefore t3 is the best estimator here since it has the minimum variance therefore t3 is the best estimator since it has minimum variance so we are con concluding our session here thank you so much